Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. I'm going to make this intro quick because by the sounds of things, someone is killing a small child a couple of doors down. Now we're continuing the row Olympics challenges from Concept 2 and today's one is going to be a 20 minute row. Why are we doing 20? Why are we doing 20 minutes this time? Because I've already recorded the half an hour um, slash 6k row at lunchtime today and the camera didn't work. So uh, I've just had to kind of reboot back into 20 minute row instead just to make sure that there's one for you to do. So this 20 minute row is an odd time. I mean, you can do it at your 5k pace probably, um, maybe slightly slower. If your 5k's run about 18 minutes-ish, you might want to knock another second off that just to make sure you can make it through the 20 minutes. Or you could just do this as a training row. Um, I'm going to be doing this run about 24 strokes per minute and at 2k plus 12 pace um, just to kind of have it as a training row because there's no way I can do it full on after rowing uh, the session earlier on today. So you just pick how you want to do it and hopefully just my chat will just keep you company while you're doing this 20 minute row for the Row Olympics challenge. And it's not going to be a row you're going to want to come back to because how on earth are you going to put up with that sound along <laughs> with the row? It sounds very uncharitable towards kids but to be honest that's a ridiculous noise to be making. Anyway, right, so uh, let's start off with the four minute warm up. I can't even concentrate on my words. Start off with the four minute warm up. Um, and we're going to set up our machine first. Uh, go to Drag Factor and set that where you want it to be. If you don't know about Drag Factor, then I've got a video on my channel. Um, <laughs> I've got a video on my channel you can watch, of which explains what Drag Factor is and gives you a few ideas where to set. It's not my kids, I tell you. It's someone else's. Um, if you're using a different kind of a machine, then basically set the resistance to a point where you get a decent weight off the machine, but it doesn't feel like you're rowing a truck down a gravel path. Next up, go to your monitor, and if you can, set it to eye height rather than looking up or down. And finally, those foot straps, set them to a point where you're able to get to the front of the machine with your shins into a vertical position, okay? Now, on shoes, that might be covering the bottom lace in, uh, on your shoe. Uh, I'm rowing on bare feet right now, which means it's kind of just going across the ball of my foot, uh, which means I'm not getting too bound up by the time I get to the front. Now, at this point, feel free to just hit pause and just stick on some music and just load up 20 minutes <laughs> when it comes to the main row, but we're just doing four minute warm up for the time being. 18 strokes per minute. Uh, I'll guide you through it. Follow me for stroke rate, okay? Here we go then in three, two, one. Let's go. So force at this 18 strokes a minute on the warm-up is really just enough to get the flywheel turning. Okay, so like a bodyweight squat. So you're doing a squat with any weights over you. The reason for that being is that I want you to work on the timing between putting the foot press into the machine, so you're pushing your legs into the foot plates, and then I want you to be concentrating on picking up the handle, the flywheel, at the same time, okay? So as you push, that's when the handle connects to the flywheel. And that way, you get the power from your legs into the machine. So whether it's a water rower, or you're using just some kind of a resistance-based machine, or it's a Concept 2, should be the same, that if you get the timing right, of pushing your feet into the machine at the same time as connecting with your hands. That's how you get all that power from your legs into the machine. Now that we're past a minute into the warm-up, increase your effort a little bit. If you know your 2K training pace, aim for about 2K plus 20 by this stage. Really, you're just wanting to get that heart rate up, get the feeling of your muscles working in preparation for what should be a short, sharp row today. Which, depending on how much effort you put into it, should leave you in a good sweaty state. If it doesn't, just tag on a one minute time trial at the end. Okay. Let's take one more stroke and then put one foot on the ground and then continue rowing. Now I can do this really easily because I'm in bare feet. The transition in and out foot straps, I mean. And the point of this is to give you a chance to concentrate on your body position and that push from the leg that's in. And the body position is because the compression at the front should be easier with only one leg strapped into the machine. Swap feet. 
because you don't have two legs kind of springing you up as you get into the front. The downside is that with only one leg in, you can really over compress. Try not to do that. Try to still keep your forward lean in to, as you're looking at me, 11 o'clock on the clock face. If you don't know what I'm on about, I'll talk about it in the main session. Both feet in, legs straight. Just roll with your back and arms. So swing over your hips, pull in your arms. Then push out your arms, swing over your hips. Now you really want to be get a feeling of picking up the flywheel as you swing over your back. So you're generating power with that hip rock and then adding in power with your arms. You're not starting off by pulling with your arms, okay? Now let's roll to the front with straight arms, press out, okay? So here you're really not using your arms. You're working on the timing of pushing with your feet and picking up the handle. And you're also working on that position, holding the forward lean into the front of the machine with straight arms in order to start off that power efficiently and effectively. Last stroke, oh, I'm gonna finish. See, I'm gonna talk about this in a minute. I've start, suddenly developed a really weird technique quirk, but I'll talk about that later. You keep on moving up and down the rail, have a quick drink. I need to go and stir a pot of chili, weirdly, but then I will <laughs> explain what today's session is. This really is a strange one, isn't it? Between the kids trying to kill each other two doors down and me having to stir a bowl of chili. You wouldn't get this from any of the pro professional ones which you pay your money for, would you? <laughs> anyway, that's the deal we make, okay? I do these for free so you can put up with all this kind of nonsense. But like I say, this is a 20 minute standalone row that you're unlikely to ever come back and do again anyway. So put up with it once, delete it, and we're off. So. 20 minute row, I'm going to be doing this at 24 strokes per minute and at 2k plus 12 pace. You wrote however you have planned, you might want to just do a 5k within this, it's totally up to you. Um, yeah, so we'll just get into it, I will talk to you and hopefully together we will drown out the sound of whatever's going on two doors down. Ah, right, there we go, cool. Right, here we go then in three, two, one, let's go. Right, so 24 strokes per minute is one stroke every two and a half seconds. And it's also my favorite stroke rate. Don't know if everybody has a favorite stroke rate, but I do. And it's 24. Just feel that it's best tuned to my body's rhythm. So I can get the pace and the feel out as I want it at 24 strokes a minute. So hopefully you know what your plan is today, whether it's following me or maybe you're trying to see how far you can get in 20 minutes or maybe you're trying to do a 5k in under 20 minutes or maybe you set your stroke rate to like 20 strokes per minute and you're trying to see how far you can get who knows it's all part of the fun Roll Olympics concept 2 challenge so with 20 minutes not being a ranked distance unless you just like the shorter row it's unlikely to be at the top of your training agenda. The thing about 20 minutes though is that it flies by, especially if you're used to doing half hour sessions. Because it's like the first 10 minutes in a half hour row is the toughest in terms of clock watching maybe not in terms of the row but 30 to 20 seems 
to me anyway, to take an eternity. But once we get 10 minutes into this row, we've then only got 10 minutes to go. But once you hit single figures, everything's groovy when you're rowing. Right, so three minutes in, hopefully you're nicely warmed up so you can really start to think about what you're doing from a technique point of view. I know that's my focus today because after uploading the 1K, one minute and 2K videos over the weekend, I realized, well, I spotted that really weird technique quirk had crept in with my hands. And actually, someone even commented on the 1K row that I had a junk technique. That's nice. But to be honest, I did. I was doing some weird kind of motorbike bunny hand thing. The truth is, I've no idea where that spawned from. It seemed to be that I was just finishing too high with the handle and not getting my elbows through. But I'm taking it as a reason to really get across that this is why a fair amount of my chit chat when not talking about neighbours' kids or bowls of chilli in most of my rows. Well, I don't talk about kids or chilli in most of my rows. The importance of punctuation there. But most of the time I talk technique. And that's mostly so that together we can concentrate on what's happening with our body positions and think about technique. And if my three rows so far are anything to go by, it's that if you don't quite concentrate at the start these technique gremlins can really invade and ruin what you're doing so that's enough of a intro <laughs> if I keep on talking like that we'll be done before I'm finished talking about my own sloppy results right breaking it down first thing that I want you to think about is tilting over your hips into the front of the machine so you have a forward lean as you're looking at me to 11 o'clock now that lean is a hinge over the hips you're not collapsing your lower back and you're not rounding in in some kind of golem like upper back thing And then, when you're at the front, you want to be up 
on your sit bones with your hips tilted forwards so if you think about your hips tilting forwards hopefully that will take care of thinking about hinging over the hips rather than crumpling and that's where the sit bones thing comes in too because if you have your tailbone tucked underneath you so you're sitting on the fleshy part of this you're not going to be getting much power into the machine lost my stroke right there here we go back to 24 now the reason for all this posture is that like I said in the warm up you put the power into the machine from your legs so you push the machine away from you with your legs and feet but if you aren't properly connected to the handle and the machine then it's all very good pushing the machine away but all that will happen is you'll go scooting backwards and no real power will get into the flywheel or water wheel etc but if you have that forward lean and straight arms then the power from your legs just flows up through your posterior chain up through your shoulders through your arms and into the handle and then into the machine There's a few other things you need to do for that to happen you need straight arms okay so as you push straight arms push much like a water skier keeps her arms straight when being towed by a boat to let the power transfer into the skis you're doing the same but you're not fighting that power with tense arms you want loose shoulders and arms as you come forwards like a zombie and only as you connect do you brace against the power with your arms and your core but you're still not tensing and fighting against it then if you have your fingers like hooks over the handle rather than a death grip then not only does it help to relax your arms but it also gives you tiny bit extra length the open palm has a little bit more air circulating around it which will keep it cooler 
less likely to have slippy hands from sweat that can then soften the skin and then increase the likelihood of blistering. But finally, if you have a straight line through your arms, wrists to the handle, that power transfer that I was on about happens very efficiently without you fighting against it. Because if you try and grab from the front, you lose that leg power. You waste all this power from your legs and you also soak up power from your arms and pulling distance of your arms because you only want to pull at the back of the machine so you drive with straight arms drive pull drive pull but there's one important part of that drive missing which is the transition of your back from the forward lean to the backward lean and that happens about halfway through the leg drive so you drive swing pull drive swing pull or as I like to say push rock pull push rock pull and then you finish with the handle elbows straight through wrists flat and this is what I was getting wrong in my videos is that I was finishing too high with a weird flick which although you'll see loads of rowers doing that it puts the force onto my wrists forearms and delts instead of my lats in my back which are much bigger and more suited to that powerful finish and like I say I think that's because I was finishing too high it could well be because I'm testing out a new heart rate strap and I'm very aware of clicking it at the back of the stroke so I'm aiming higher to try and miss it but anyway once you pull in the handle release it at the same rhythm you brought it in at in out in out okay so you're not throwing it out but neither are you pausing okay you want to use the flow of the handle almost bouncing in and out and once the handle starts to go out that triggers your back into leaning from your backwards lean into your forward lean so that when the handle is past your knees you're already in that right position with the forward lean and straight arms 
ready for the next stroke. And then all you have to do is bend your knees, bent, and you will effortlessly slide into the front of the machine. So what you're not doing is tugging on the foot straps because that will pop your knees up meaning you have to throw the handle over them but it will also destroy your posture at the back of the stroke because you still want your sit bones to be connected at the back your hips will be pointing backwards a bit but rather than having your tailbone tucked under and sitting back on the fleshy part of your backside you're still connected with your sit bones legs down sit bones connected powerful core to soak up any last momentum okay 50 seconds to go let's crank up the power you're almost done so add in more power over the next 20 seconds from your legs just push the machine away harder trying to hold that forward lean and straight arms now increase it even more if you want to you can increase your stroke rate too I'm sticking to 24 and just increasing power three more strokes for me last one for me I definitely think I need to come back and watch this video just to see what my arm's doing I still think I was too high I'll find out but I need to work on it quite alarming to see something I've been working on for so long to creep back in again which again is, like I say that's why the majority of my videos I always talk about technique not always as long as I did today to be fair but felt like a good day to talk all the way through technique so right if you went all out on that there's a chance you're currently lying on the ground gasping for air if that's the case take your time to recover and then either when you're ready climb on and do a two minute cool down because it's a good chance I'll carry on talking after I've done it or you could always pause the video or rewind it or whatever and do this in sync with me but make sure to have a drink make sure that you're recovered enough that you can get into cool down you don't want to be totally recovered because what's the point of doing a cool down oh. okay so we're going to do this right about how the pace that you got into run about two minutes into the cool down so 2k plus 20 to 30 is your, pow your power so a wee bit of power just to get the flywheel moving but not so much that you're going to start getting tired again after that row okay and three two one let's go so 18 strokes a minute again if you don't know what 2k training pace is when i talk about that stuff then there is a description of it on the description to this video and i also have a video on the channel talking about the importance of baseline testing is what it's called catchy title that tells you what how to find out your 2k training pace and why you want to have it so just let the cool down work your muscles through just your heart rate should maybe be 
I don't know, about 50 beats or so lower than it was through the main part of the row, but it might be just holding at that point. It's just almost like you're, rather than letting your heart rate go from working really hard to just dropping all the way down to total recovery, you're inserting a little bit of a recovery zone just to help everything wind down so you don't feel sore or tired the next day. And the mental value of a cool down is really important, just so you can slow down, maybe even work on technique a little bit if you thought something was going wrong. So I can slow down, have a look. My wrist seemed okay there. So I have to think, what was I doing? Was it posture? Finishing too high? Was I laying back too far? Was I like that? Could have been that. All right, that's my two minutes up. You don't have to stop here, of course. You can carry on cooling down. Or if you are done, you can start packing up. Maybe do some stretching while I go through my usual end waffle. No, it's not waffle. It's really important. Now they shut up. Had I just waited half an hour, eh? Still, it made it entertaining for nothing else. Listen, by the time you had either me just talking away, the sound of my flywheel and the sound of your flywheel, I'm sure you can hear all the noise anyway. And hopefully, Eddie Van Badger, my little microphone, is tight enough that it wasn't that loud. But like I say, because this is part of the Rolympics Concept 2 Challenge, I doubt that people will find this on YouTube and see the thumbnail and go, oh, well, try that. Something that's, like say it's in 2023 and you see something dated 2021 as a challenge. Are you going to do it? But if you wanted to do just a 20 minute workout, then yeah, it'd probably work. Yeah. I don't know what goes through your mind. All I care is that we roll along together, okay? So, and like I say, it's, it's, as long as you're okay with the fact that things like this happen, that I sometimes have the odd hiccup or whether it's sound or, or whatever, then you're not paying for it, you're getting it for free, so you put up with this stuff. That's kind of the way I see it. And, and like, listen, if you knew what you were gonna to do today, then you could just have had me on screen just to follow stroke rate at 24 strokes per minute. And you could have loaded up Mixcloud or Soundcloud alongside it, stuck on dead mouse at full volume, and just kind of looked at, yeah, <laughs> who knows how you do this? Tell you what, leave me a wee comment. That's the best thing to do, eh? Just, uh, what should we do? So you can leave a comment and use the hashtag, um, this is how I do it. This is how we do it. Oh, it's we do it, isn't it, for the song? And I just sang at you as well. But yeah, this is how I do it, rather than this is how we do it for the song. And then you can say what you did. You can say, did you, did you have this in front of you uh, on, a, on an iPad? Did you have it on the phone up at the top? Did you have a computer to the side? Which actually is a bad idea slightly because if you're looking to the side, you turn to the side, so that light rotation of your spine isn't particularly good for you, so you're best to have something up in front of you. So I've got a projector in my studio when I'm rowing, so I've got everything kind of right in front of me so that I don't have to look down or left or right. And it does make a difference. I mean, even if you're on an iPad or something to the side, it's worthwhile investing like $10, 10 pounds or whatever on a little iPad stand that, um, like I've got, heat, got one here that sits in the arm of the monitor. So I'm just, I'm talking now. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this row. I will, uh, as long as everything goes to plan tomorrow, then I will record the 30 minute row again um, and get that up for you to do and then finish off. So the 30 minute one is going to be the 30 minute and 6K kind of rolled into one because for some people the 6K could take up to 30 minutes. So it kind of makes sense that if I'm going to have to go up to 30 minutes anyway, I might as well buddy it up much like the 2K in the 10 minutes. And then the 10K I will do the day after, and that will be the 10K and 60 minute for the same reason, okay? It's not that I'm lazy, it's just the only way I can get all of these rows up there in time before the challenge finishes on Friday. So, I'm thinking. Or is it Saturday? Who knows? So, are we done? You done? You stretched? You good? You had a drink? You ready to go home? Okay. Stay safe, be well. Bye-bye.